Oh, my big thing I collect is non-such explorer series. Hmm. These are some of the greatest recordings ever made. And they're done with a stereo microphone on site, on, you know, wherever they were recorded. And the quality is just off, it pins the needle, it's the best. And the same, I also collect Alan Lomax recordings for the same reason. Alan Lomax had an Ampex recorder and a stereo microphone, and he would go to somebody's house or front porch and set up the stereo microphone. Let her rip, one take. Same with, I'm into Buddy Holly's apartment tapes lately. And they're the same, Buddy Holly bought, he bought his record producer's Ampex 401 mono recorder and a couple of microphones, and he started recording things in his apartment. And there's ambience, there's him talking to his wife, you can hear trucks and cars outside, you can hear him crunching up bag, plastic bags. I mean, it is just, it's brilliant. And when I listen to hi-fis, you can really hear the differences between things with what I call the room sound. And there's them laughing, you can hear them talking on the phone. Huh. And it's just this really high quality Ampex recorder. And I'm pretty sure he had the recorder sitting on his coffee table and the microphone sitting next to it on the coffee table. And he'd be sitting there with his guitar, just like right there. And the window is to his left. These are mono recordings. Maria or Elena is <clears throat> in the kitchen over there. You can hear her click the phone down. Wow, I like that. That's what I liked about Sun Ra too. We love Tony Williams. One day I walking down the street with my friend J.C. Morrison and I said, where are we going? He goes, I'm taking you to this concert. And he says, what I want you to do, he says, you've never heard anything like this, but afterwards we're going out for a drink and I want you to draw pictures of what you heard. And it was Ornette Coleman. And he said, I'm gonna judge you on these pictures. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. So I went to the concert and it was really good. I can't remember, it was not a fancy venue. It was a, kind of a sleazy concrete floor venue on the Lower East Side. And I can't remember who played with him, but then we went out to this bar and I started sketching pictures on, the, on paper. And he said, Herm, he said, I think you're gonna like this kind of music, you get it. And that's kind of my approach to music. I'm not so good at like explaining the context or the history or giving it a name, but I can tell what I hear. You know, I can see the space. I can, see. I mean, the artist's intent. When you, if you can watch the brain, I suppose that's what jazz people like. They like the brain of the person playing, the mind, the, the, to watch the mind work. And that's kind of what I like in music, is watching the mind work. What I like about Tony Williams is the freedom we talked about in the 60s, it's here. I don't even like the word free jazz, but you can sense when people, I mean, it was the same with the, you know, on the longer version of, on the Jack, Johnson tapes, you can hear, they're just going, they're just moving, they're not stopping. Tony just moves. For me, movement is everything, and it's the same with paintings. It's, it's movement in space. They always say with a camera, and oh look, Ken's got the camera on a tripod and it's just sitting there. But the idea, they call it motion pictures, not because the people are moving, but because the camera is moving. And in a band, the way the thing moves is everything. And this, when you have a band, it's the band. I remember there's some famous quote that might not even be true, where Bob Dylan goes to whoever and says, I'm a folk singer. I don't want to be a folk singer. I want to have a band. I want to be a, ba be a band. And so he picks up the Paul Butterfield band. Those guys could move. You know, there's some great rhythm sections and that's part of the reason people like Sly Stone were so amazing. I mean, they just had a rhythm section. Paul Butterfield had that. So Dylan went from sitting on a chair with a guitar to like moving with a band. And I still, that's what Tony Williams is, you know, and mm. I like movement. I like the band that move. Mm. And I still don't understand this person completely, but I think I, I think I get, this to me is real painting. My paintings probably come closer to C Cecil Taylor, rather, than they do to most. I don't get him completely, 
but I definitely, I see myself in his work. This is a record Steve Guttenberg turned me on to. And I use it a lot because it's, again, it's one of those intimate, it's, let me see it. It's, it's on. And his mother called him Bill, and it's a tribute to Billy Strayhorn. But it's such a beautiful thing. You, it takes place after. It's like the recorder was running and the session is over, and Duke is at the piano. And it just, I like intimacy. What makes a book good? Intimacy. What makes art good? Intimacy. And this one really caught my heart, and I use it a lot. I play it a lot. Um, and it's a diner group. Don't ask me why. There's Mel! <laughs> the Velvet Fog. I mean, in a million years, in 1968, when I was a teenager, if I'd have said, Herb, you're gonna love Mel Torme, I would have just been stabbing myself in the chest, making sure I didn't live long enough for that, you know? This guy's amazing. And it's intimacy again. Hmm. Pure intimacy. That's a great point. I, mean, I haven't seen all these great jazz people in life, and I'm sure Ken has and many of you have, but when you feel totally connected to what's going on, I mean, I can remember the first time I went to the Blue Note, and I was kind of shocked at the environment. It was small. I got lucky. I mean, I was sitting really close up. I just, I wandered in there with somebody. I was like, oh my God. It was right there. You know, you could not separate the band from me. That was my first take on jazz in New York City, was the air between myself and the performers was so alive it connected my chest to their chest, my mind to their mind. And, I mean, even sitting at the bar, I always felt I could sit at the bar even with a drink, and there's the band, but I really felt like the energy between us was going both ways. And I like that. 